Hi guys, many of you asked for a video on how to change the N215 and 216 uh, valves on the TSG6 DQ250 Megatronic unit uh, and uh, I had time to do it now uh, this is my uh, setup at home so uh, it's how I do it uh, you can do it if you can do it better you can do it by yourself in another way uh, what we will need for uh, for this uh, you can see I put some baking paper uh, for own you know this is uh, holding the, the oil if there is any oil in the in the unit uh, some of you told me I have to wear gloves well uh, I am wearing gloves now what you will need uh, would be a screwdriver with a T20 bit and a bit bigger bit a T30 that's all what you need to dismantle it so first we have four screws here it's one two three and four here that's holding the plastic uh, interconnector so you can see here one two three four this we will have to take out uh, so we take the connector out in order to have access to the valves so I'll go on and just uh, start unscrewing this I'll just untighten them first with the screwdriver and then I will pop them out So as you can see these screws have a bit of uh, neck here, uh, this is where the plastic connector will, will be. Well, it's going the same way with the last one. Now that we have the unit, I have disconnected the plastic, now we will just have to disconnect the connector from the PCB and it's coming out here you have is a push here we turn it around and slowly pull up the plastic connector so this is the plastic connector this makes the connection between all the valves on the mechatronic unit now, uh, as depicted in the self-study program 308, SSP308 from uh, Volkswagen, uh, all the pictures you will see are in this way, with the connector up. And uh, we will have the N215 here and the N216 here. Then this is the N217 uh, down here. We will have the N371, N233, and uh, all these small ones are the gear uh, valves. So usually uh, when something goes wrong it's the N215 or N216 valve that goes uh, broken in, uh, in, this, uh, in these units. So what we want to do now is take out these two valves and uh, see if we can change them. It's easier for me to hold it this way. They are held uh, onto, the, onto the valve body with four screws. And we will just try to take them out. Uh, they are pretty tight, so I will need to use a bit of force. One out, two out, three out, and I think I forgot one. Yeah, there. So, once I've loosened them, 
I can just take it out very easy. In order to not make a mess here, I'm going to have to put some paper. So I'm going to remove the screws. And then this is one of the valves. This is how it looks like. So this here it's the N215. Uh, on the units, on the on the valves, you will notice some numbers. Uh, these are production numbers. It's not the part number actually for for this uh, solenoid. Uh, the part number it's uh, another one. I don't remember it exactly right now, but this is just the manufacturing number. Uh, and now we are going to take out the N16, uh, N215, and N216 are the same. Uh, you can change them uh, between them, uh, up or down, doesn't matter, they are the same. But if you change the valves, any of the valves, uh, you will have to perform uh, a gearbox adaptation before you can drive the car again. Because the unit will learn the values for the valves. So once you change one valve, you will have to just uh, make the adaptation again when you put the mechatronic unit back in the car so if you are just going to clean it it's uh, important to remember which one is the N215 and which one is the N216 now uh, under the valves we have a very small filter that will hold back any uh, uh, mess you have inside the oil uh, if you are going to clean it uh, take care not to clean with uh, with something uh, based on on, uh, on alcohol because this is a very uh, fragile uh, gasket uh, made out of silicone and if you are cleaning with the alcohol you might damage it so I do not recommend cleaning with with alcohol good now we took out uh, the N215 2016 uh, when you uh, replace them with some new ones. Uh, they are going to come in uh, in some boxes directly from uh, Borg Warner. Maybe I don't pronounce it correctly, but that's how I say it. Sorry, my for my for my English. Uh, so Borg Warner is the one that's producing the the, the valves. There are also some other <coughs> companies that make these valves. Uh, I do not recommend changing them with some China valves. I've seen a lot of uh, customers that bought from from China and had problems with uh, with the valves uh, and that's why I do not recommend buying something else uh, but it's up to you of course the the Borg Warner it's a bit more expensive uh, the China are a bit less expensive quite very cheap actually uh, but as I said I do not recommend changing them with the China models Another component that's uh, sometimes uh, burning, it's the N217 or the N218. Uh, so 217, 218 and down here we have the N371 and then the N233. Uh, 217, 218 are the same uh, and 371 and N233 are also the same. If you look closer, you will see that uh, here I have uh, bushing uh, copper. It's quite big on both 371 and 233. And on the 217, 218, they are quite small. So this bushing, copper bushing is very small on this and this one, 217, 218. N371 and 233 are bigger bushings. So these two are the same, these two are the same. Uh, so it doesn't matter which goes where, in which position, uh, you can just uh, buy one of them and then change it. In order to take that out, uh, let's take one for example, we will take the 371 uh, down here in this corner. 
just to see what's all about. They are held with one screw on the valve body. And then we will see down under there is a hole where the oil comes on and you have a black rubber uh, o-ring. Um, usually when we uh, refurbish we change also the the o-rings uh, because some oil might slip uh, between the the o-ring and the, the valve body. It's not so often that this happens but sometimes it does. So this is one of the other valves <coughs> that we uh, actually have to change because they get burned. Uh, and they get burned because of the bad oil quality uh, and overheating. Uh, when the oil is old uh, and loses some of the, the qualities, uh, the valves are much more stressed uh, and then uh, they tend to burn. Now let's look at one of the one of the uh, gear uh, valves. They are held fast with uh, with uh, three screws. I'll just take one where I have easier access to it, and that would be the N uh, N88 down here. So we we'll just take this out. So, the last screw, I skipped the other ones. Now, when you take this out, be careful, under the, the valve uh, there is a shim, I call it, and a ball bearing. So, as you can see, here is the, the valve, here you have the ball bearing. And then you have this uh, this aluminium shim. I'll just take the ball and just put it here. Watch out when you take this one out. You can see there is a position where it has to be. So the one with uh, the legs, let's call them legs, goes down. Very oily, and then the ball down on top. Inside, inside. Let's see if we can we can see it here. I'm not sure. Yeah, you will have a spring and two rubber gaskets. Uh, as you can see here, this one might have leaked a little bit, but that's not 100% sure. Yeah. So usually we will change this one also or you can find um, some emulsion that will uh, re-soften the, the rubber rings uh, so you don't need to change them uh, but I recommend changing them if you have them if not just uh, take it out inspect it and see if it's everything okay as it should be uh, and I usually turn them upside down to have better contact As I said before, this is my way of doing it. If you think it's wrong, just do it as you think is right. I'm not... Good. Putting it back, it's very easy, the same way. Uh, the spring, you take it, you put it back, it doesn't matter which way. It's inside. Now let's see if we can take the ball. And put it in. It's in. Usually the shim will stick to the valve so you don't need to take care of that one. Easy. It's fitting and it's on. Back, putting the screws. Remember the screws for the valves have no. Uh, um, neck here. Uh, the ones for the plastic connector have a neck here. You can see there is a difference. 
and putting it back on. So this unit it's uh, it's burnt, totally burnt. That's why I don't need to fix it or do or change anything. Uh, I just use it as a demonstration to show you how it's done or how how we do it. I'm sure there are many mm, guys smart how they, that will do it in another way and uh, get the same results. It's just a valve. When you tighten it, just tighten by hand. Uh, don't over tight, just be sure it's sitting good and uh, the seal it's, uh, it's closed. Because you don't want any oil leaking out. So just firm. I'm not at the end right now. Yes. 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 And as I said, I put in the wrong screw. I have to take it out again. It's exactly what I told you about. Don't change the screws. use the same type as it was in and I found one without the neck it's going in I cannot use the electrical screwdriver here because the place is very tight and I have no place for the head or the bit yes tight and it's right again, it's right again, uh, and this is about it. This one, as you can see, um, the filter, you can just uh, turn it upside down as you want. Just watch for uh, any debris, clean it, and uh, you can just put it back. As you can see there is a, a play, uh, that means it's sliding up and down. I'm not sure if this uh, valve is okay, I didn't measure it. Uh, this is going out so well. Uh, you will have to measure and then just uh, see exactly if it's okay or not. Uh, on the big ones, uh, we need two screws on each. It's on. It's on. Put that one also. On. And on. Tighten by hand. This, this, this. Watch out, don't push too much so you don't break the leg. Hold it. Don't tighten too hard because this gasket with uh, with the filter it's plastic and you might break it so uh, after you changed all the valves and you put uh, back all the screws make sure everything it's uh, tight you put back the plastic connector as you can see inside here we have some small I'm not sure if you can see it but I have some small metal connectors that will touch the the legs of the of the valves usually I tend to push them so uh, they are a little bit more tight when uh, 
when uh, I connect them back so I don't have any so I'm just going to press them down one by one easy don't hurry because you might push them too far away and they will break on the other side so as you can see easy 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 and go around all of them when you're done put it back here and easy push them in the connectors do not push too much down just so they are nice good then the only thing left it's the four screws for the connector one two three and four so uh, that's about it uh, I will uh, spend See, it's enough you don't have to use force this is not going anywhere and now reconnect and you're done well another question is uh, another question I get from the users from you guys it's uh, how do I see which type of unit I have in my car uh, well you can either use a diagnostic tool uh, like uh, VAS or VCDS or uh, VCP or whatever tool you have on hand and read the, the hardware ID uh, or you can just look on this unit here uh, I'm not sure if you can see but here it's written on the black cover the model number on this case I have a 0 to E 9 to 7 7 0 AE so this is an AE unit uh, the mostly uh, uh, used unit on, on, on vehicles between 200 and uh, 6 205 206 up to 2008 uh, when VW uh, changed uh, or Audi uh, the concern uh, changed the unit to another unit called AG and then they went up to uh, AM and AL uh, so this is a CXX uh, hardware unit uh, the first generation with the Motorola chipset and it's the most common in, 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 the, in the cars uh, between the years 2005, 6 and uh, up to 2008, 9 um, main problem with these units it's uh, either the, the valves are going to, to burn uh, and if the valves are not going to, to burn then the circuitry inside the unit it's under this uh, cover here uh, it's burning uh, the problem is uh, uh, um, diode or if it's uh, worse it will be a transistor that's burned inside it uh, if the diode uh, it's burned uh, it's possible to change it but if the transistor is burned then there is no chance to change it at least not for me and I think uh, nobody will uh, use that amount of time to change a, 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 f a film component type of, 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 of transistor because it's very hard to, to change uh, under the cover we have a lot of silicone uh, that is uh, covering all the, the uh, circuitry so um, this is uh, how you change the, the valves um, also in my previous video uh, I showed you that here between the, the valve body uh, parts we have a gasket it's an aluminium gasket but on each side of the aluminium gasket uh, you have some paper gasket I don't know if it's uh, if, if you can see it or not here I have one paper gasket aluminium and then another paper gasket again uh, this gasket sometimes fails uh, and you will start losing pressure on the on the unit uh, and then you have to change the, the the gasket 
So that's about it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.